Time has been called. Competitors in a voluntary order make your 30-second opening statements. Please stand and direct your opening statements to the audience. The timer will indicate when your 30 seconds has elapsed by holding up a red card. You may begin. Hello, everybody. My name is Lindsay Christensen from Rigby, and I believe in order to protect our farmlands and, pro and property rights, we need to implement to our local governments about agricultural zoning, which will set limits to those who are, who are buying our precious farmlands and so setting those limitations on what can and cannot happen to the farmlands next to it. Thank you. Oh. Uh, my name is Rainy Gallup, and uh, this is a big issue with these big companies coming in and purchasing our precious farmland. And a way that we can do that is to educate them on why that farmland is so very important to us and to America and why that we need to create these grants and zones for people to be able to have that encouragement to keep their farmland in order to not sell out. Thank you. Good afternoon to each of you. With farmers only making roughly $30,000 a year in Idaho, it can be challenging for them to keep their land productive instead of selling out to larger corporations and to the government. I propose that by introducing zoning and advocating for farmers to sell to future farmers and to their lower generations, that we can minimize this issue. Thank you. Hello, my name is Ethan Webster. Um, a national report as of August 2020 said that 68,000 plus acres of farmland had been lost to development between 2001 and 2016 in Idaho. So it's a real problem and that's only increasing. And I think that solutions lie in educating about the need for farmland, especially with a growing population, and also in lobbying for zoning and land trusts that will allow farmland to stay in the agricultural industry. I'm Jalen Perkins from the South Fremont FFA chapter, and according to the New York Times, two acres of land in the U.S. are being lost to urbanization per minute. And so this is a very big and prevalent problem, and Farm Bureau can help us to combat this problem by helping educate the farmers and to support the farmers. And I'm looking forward to having a good discussion about how Farm, Farm Bureau can help support this. Thank you. You have heard the opening statements. The competitors may now proceed with the discussion. Competitors, please direct your discussion to the, your fellow panel members. The time begins. Julian, I had a question for you after your opening statement on what are some activities or events or ways that you think that Farm Bureau would be able to educate the need for this land and the issue at hand? So I think that Farm Bureau actually already has a lot of, of these programs in place. If you look at the YFNR and the p and &E and everything, they have these, these platforms where they can reach out to the farmers and they can educate them on the importance of this land. And I think doing it more maybe locally, trying to keep that farmland there and if the local farm bureau agencies can reach out to the local farmers in their area, then they can specifically reach out to them and through things like lobbying and everything. I know Ethan mentioned that. Do you want to expound on what you meant by that a little bit? Yeah, I think that uh, we have an opportunity, Farm Bureau specifically has the opportunity through their influence with the relations with some of these, with some of these farms to to kind of be a voice and go and and lobby or or call for these trusts and and for zoning plans that will allow agricultural land and farmlands to stay that way and continue to be used for that purpose. And I think that in addition to that, you guys brought up the point of educating. And I think just besides like lobbying and going and looking for for laws and things that can help that way. Education is the first part of that. People need to know why it's an issue and uh, why it's important that we keep it that way. And then in turn, they can start looking for change and things that are gonna help us maintain that. I think that's going, a really great. Go ahead, Lindsay. Sorry, going off of what Ethan said, um, I think it's very important to educate our communities. And I think it's really important to educate our local governments and uh, talk to them about agricultural zoning. I know reading from the Pennsylvania Agricultural Zoning <coughs> Committee, they have a strong plan of step one, getting a strong uh, 
county plan, a plan that goes with the entire county that works for everybody, and then taking that plan to your local governments and seeing who is for and against the plan, and then going to your local farmers and your community and trying to get them for your plan, and then bringing it back to your local governments to see, hey, our community wants this plan, and so that will vote, make them vote to the right direction. And then at the very end, get data from your community to back up your plan. You know, Lindsay, I think that's a really great point on zoning to make sure that this land can stay profitable in the areas that it needs to be, as well as touching with Ethan. I think that educating others and making sure that farmers are educated on the need for future farmers coming into the industry on what land they need so that they can relay that onto the public on the zoning needs as well as the needs of the farming lands. I definitely think with education, like you said, is kind of the root of where we need to start with this in our local our local governments or the people in our local areas. But I don't know if you guys have looked at the moving in rates, but Rigby is one of the largest growing communities um, in our area. So people are constantly moving in who may not have an agriculture background and may not understand the purpose and the importance of our farmland. So a great way to maybe educate these people would be to suppose a, a conference of sorts or a uh, a way to advocate and educate why this land is important. Uh, along with those lobbying, lobbying companies, we can work with them and maybe what uh, resources, influences that they have. And like with Farm Viewer, I know we have um, lots of ways we can do that. I think that's a really great point because, you know, more than just educating the farmers, it's important to educate everybody on the importance of this farmland. And one thing maybe that Farm Bureau could kind of lobby for is trying to get people to when they come into areas to build on land that maybe wouldn't be good for farming, you know? Um, and that way we're still keeping that land for the farmers and then people can still come and build, but it's not taking away the farmland. I agree, Jada. I think that we've talked about educating the government, we've talked about educating farmers about like what, what they can do, how we can bring communities together on it. But I think, like you brought up, we also need to educate the developers because I thought you brought up a great point saying like, what, what is the use of the land? You, can, you might be able to build a house on land that you can't necessarily farm, but you can't farm land that you can't farm, right? There's no solution to that. So I think that we need to educate the developers so they know that they might need to be looking elsewhere for places to do better things. Um, so I think it's just important that everyone gets educated so that we can all work together to come to a solution. I agree with your point, Ethan. You know, according to the National Polls Committee, Idaho is the fastest growing state in the nation. And so we need to make sure that we're allowing that growth because it can benefit Idaho's economy and benefit our communities. And touching off of Lindsay and these zoning laws with the governments, I think will tremendously help agriculture land still being able to use productivity, but also being able to grow our economy like you were saying, Jalen. Mm -hmm. Ethan, you were saying how we need to educate our developers. Do you have any ways or any ideas how we could get that education to our developers? That's interesting because obviously I think it needs to be done, but it's likely that some of those developers are not necessarily associated with the ag industry, so maybe maybe they're not associated with Farm Bureau, but I think Farm Bureau still has a huge role in, a huge role, excuse me, in educating them. Um, and I think maybe a way you could go about that is getting the word out about some sort of campaign to developers about looking, giving them information about where they where they can expand, where there's room to expand their industries while leaving that. So maybe some sort of campaign um, that the word is spread through members of YFNR, FFA, everyone's getting the word out to those developers um, in that way just so that they know and they can help us kind of start working towards it, towards the change. I know it. another idea to touch base on. A lot of ways we communicate today is through social media. And so I think being active on social media and reaching out to our adults and to our older generations, um, this is what's happening on our farmlands and this is how we can fix it. And so I think reaching out, um, just not through face-to-face, -face, yeah, face-to-face -face is always a great way to make a connection, but now in the world our ch is changing, Virtually and th through social media may be the way that we can maybe bring that push a little further. And I, I think, think really, oh, sorry, go ahead. I think that's a really great point, Lindsay. And Ethan, touching into like the education of this, I think a great program that the Farm Bureau has is FFA Young Farmers and Ranchers. And the way that this will happen is because you take FFA and members 
that are youth and have minds that can be taught about the issues at hand. And as they grow, even if they aren't going to be part of agri the agriculture industry directly, you can take these people that are building these businesses and these homes and educate them on the issue at hand, like you were saying, Lindsay. Doing that through social media, newspapers, activities that the Farm Bureau does that's face-to-face -face and hands-on so that students can learn in their individual experiences what is important. And linking those thoughts, um, Lindsay and Maddie, you mentioned the, the benefits of, of like the YFNR or the FFA to Young Farmers and Ranchers program. And you mentioned the use of social media and things to remote film, things like that. And the members of the FFA and the YFNR are young people which likely have maybe more of a connection through social media, right? So getting to those, using those people and that, that age group of people to get to those audiences through the tools they have and know so well, I think is key to getting everybody educated. Yeah. With that, oh, sorry. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, there, we have this education, and I love this idea of just reaching out to you know our programs that we already have connections with. My worry is that we have these new people that maybe aren't coming from agriculture backgrounds. They don't understand that importance again. Uh, so I think the importance is maybe educating these bigger cities, these people who are coming in, uh, setting up things that they can uh, ask questions, because I feel like a lot of times we have questions but we don't know where those questions should be directed to, which would be for Farm Bureau and setting up using that social media platform to allow for the room of questions. But then we have the other purpose of these farmers that are longtime farmers don't have anyone to take their farm afterwards. What are they going to do? Because selling out to um, big companies is an easy out for them that makes them a lot of money quickly. What incentive can we give them in order for them to keep their farmland and not sell out? Do you have any ideas? I think um, one thing that Farm Bureau can do is just maybe helping to support them and maybe some sort of tax break or something to mm -hmm. help them, give them the incentive to keep their farmland in farmland because these big companies and corporations, they come in and they're willing to pay a lot of money for this farmland mm -hmm. to build on it. And I think if Farm Bureau can just help to support those farmers and let them know that they don't have to sell out, you know, and if we can help the producers, then I think that is one way that Farm Bureau can help keep the farmland. I agree, and that brings like some of the lobbying back into it. I like what you said about it being an easy out for them to sell mm -hmm. to a big company. I think we have to understand that that is their right. They have the right to do that if they want to. We can't take that away. We can't tell them they have to keep their land as farmland. But I think that definitely with some incentive, if we start lobbying um, for some uh, easements and trust mm -hmm. and things like that, things that give them a break, yeah. that, that'll, that'll help them see that. So that's Creating just, a program maybe for these young farmers, because the average age for farmers in this area is between 60 and 70 years old. And they're kind of at the point where they're ready to retire, hand the farm off to somebody else. And if, that's why I mentioned it being an easy out. If we maybe create a program to invite young farmers who are wanting to get into it, who don't come from these longtime farming families, um, that allows them to kind of take over this old farmer's generation if they uh, do so and it creates like this mentoring program to help educate this new generation of new farmers. I think that that will rely a lot on like the new farmers and the older generations of farmers trying to come together so that we can make our country better. As one, it's important that these new farmers have the opportunity to grow their desires to be in the production agriculture field as well as the previous farmers that are trying to retire from that land so that they can come together and make sure that the land is still being productive. And I think that lobbying is going to be a really great idea for that, putting these ideas out on the social media so that the average Joe can understand what is actually happening in our community and in our nation. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. And I think that's another area where, you know, increasing involvement in FFA and YFNR, things like that comes in. Because I know for me, I do not come from a family that farms or anything like that. but. Being involved in FFA, that's made me, that's opened up my eyes to all this world, of, this ad world of possibilities, and I've learned so much about it that I didn't know. And I think just helping people become involved in these programs, I think that will really help. Just touching base on what Rainy and Maddie said on getting a program started for our young farmers to inherit the older farmers who may not have somebody. Um, I think a way we can start that is what Maddie said, our FFA to YFNR. We have lots of young producers in the FFA who are 
now growing up, graduating, and if we can make a program somehow that gets these FFA members that are now our young producers that want to be taking that farmland. Mm -hmm. I think our main points on that are just educating people that aren't involved. Simply that's, and that's what FFA really does. You know, you have these young freshmen coming into these intro to ag classes who are um, never been involved, always thought that maybe FFA was just you had to own livestock and that's all it was when there was really, you know, other chances and opportunities like this. And I think that's where those, those people are the kind of people we can reach out with who probably have um, the ability to help us make those connections with those other people. You mentioned maybe testing soil um, to see, you know, if it is farmable or that kind of ideas. Has it has that been done before? Do you know? Um, I don't really know about that, um, but I imagine so. And I think that actually is a really good idea um, to see how farmable the soil is and everything. Because then, if the farm the soil is not as farmable, then obviously that's the soil that you want to try to get the developers to build upon and everything and keep in the farmland. But that would be maybe even something that Farm Bureau could help with. Mm -hmm. um, they could offer to do research projects and to test that soil, and then they could reach out and try to get developers to build on the land that maybe isn't quite as farmable. To yeah. dive deeper into your question, Rainy, about educating people, um, <coughs> do you have any new programs that the Farm Bureau could do, or ways that the Farm Bureau could implement new practices to make sure people are being educated? Um, I definitely think stuff like this because it's required us um, the discussion need to do our research and dive into a field that we aren't totally interested with. I think maybe there's possibilities with the YFNR to create more programs, create more competition, so to say, that makes you think outside of the box, out of your norm, in order to learn more and then have a way for them to apply it. Maybe they will be able to jump on a committee if they were invited to jump on a committee at Farm Bureau and help actually use their ideas and implement those, I think would attract a lot of interest, especially with upcoming uh, youth. I like that you brought up, sorry. No, go ahead. I like that you brought up the existing programs like FFA and YFNR, we can use them. We don't have to maybe create a whole new program, but these, sure. exist, these existing programs branching off and stuff like that. YFNR, one of the really valuable things about it is the connections it allows people to make. And Farm Bureau plays a huge role a lot of times in people finding careers, finding their way into the ag industry, or not even. So, not the ag industry, I mean, but just to giving them the opportunities and the connections and the ability to do that. So, a thought I had is maybe a branch of that is helping these maybe younger generations get the connections with these existing operations mm -hmm. so that they have the experience maybe working for them so that when they pass on there, there's someone for them to pass it on to. Does that make sense? But I like what you brought up about maybe we just need to branch off of what we already have, you know, yeah. and, and not maybe go completely to a new thing. Because something that's like, super important that is you don't want to spread too thin. You know, we only have so many people, so much money, so much resources and knowledge to go so far. And if we have all these issues we're trying to adjust, address, we might, you know, run out of that time. So if we can just take something that was already works, already has these connections, I think that there's um, multiple and many opportunities to be able to branch out and really make those connections. So all of this is very possible and can be done. I know personally our chapter we do our fourth grade ag day and we educate these younger people about agriculture and about our farmlands. I think the main goal here is we need to educate our older generation and the adults. I think they're the ones that aren't quite in getting through that these farmlands are vital to how our economy runs. And so I think we need to implement a way that as us young agriculturalists are educating our older generations. Just like as Rainy said, we could have some type of conference or convention or even booths at the fair or anything that could just get us out there to reach out to our older generations. That's a really good point, Lindsay. And you know, Farm Bureau has something similar with Maggie the Cow, State Fairs, milking a cow. Mm -hmm. If they could, tra we could transition that into an educational opportunity about the farming lands in Idaho and the farming lands throughout the nation as like, graphs and bringing in different products throughout the nation that are grown and bringing in first-hand farmers that have this experience of either learning how to build up an operation or who are interested in like selling and kind of educating the public because at these are at the state fairs there's people from all over the state and that come and look at this and so you're not just having agricultural so you could target that entire community and bring in that education that we want and I, I mean, 
Sorry. I really agree what you say there, Maddie, of bringing in products from all around the country because you have people who come to your fairs that aren't, you know, aren't just from that county, aren't from just that state. And so I think giving somebody a hands-on experience makes them more able to be able to really understand what is going on in their world around them. I think as members of like FFA and that we can have an impact even locally in that in that way. Like we have the ability just even up just the beginning level of FFA to make those connections, bring the people in that have experience and to, to our local fairs, local things like that. And that way we play a huge hand even just maybe as a small the smaller beginning steps of the organization in bringing those people in and getting people to see it. And so I like that and I think that we can have a huge role in that even now. I really like how you bring in the local aspect of it because you know change starts small and it's very important to educate the population and the community as a whole on this problem but it needs to start in our local communities and with our local farmers and our local farm bureau agencies. Mm -hmm. so. And like Lindsay and both Ethan have mentioned, that older generation is kind of you know our, our point, our main focus. Um, and if we create this sort of mentoring program that both benefits the older generation farmer and this new generation farmer, we're able to you know give a benefit to either of them. Whether that be the newer farmer is kind of teaching the older generation kind of the new ways of farming, because farming is evolving every single day. There's uh, new technology, and with that technology requires. Uh, a lot of learning and I know that is something that they may struggle with and that can help that young farmer be able to see how a large operation is run maybe not so small um, to be able to branch out and make those connections because it's about who you know and those connections you can make with certain people so now that we have like I think we all come into a consensus that we all want to educate the public and we all want to educate but now I think we really need to put our education into impl implementation and so we need to come up with a plan on how we can educate and so, like Rainy was saying, conventions or something like that, or even pairing, how she said, a younger farmer to an older farmer. I think it would be very beneficial. They could each share each other, the young farmer to the older farmer, new technologies, or even simpler ways to farm. And so I think implementing is the next step we need to go. I agree, Lindsay. And I think to do that, the best way to learn is firsthand experience. That way you get your knowledge straight from your personal source and you see how it actually works. And by using what you said, the fourth grade Ag Day activities, educating these younger generations, introducing a new state fair opportunity for the public to learn from, or even involving the FFA. Time has been called. Please prepare your closing statements. I ask that the audience remain silent for one minute to aid the competitors in their preparation. Please put down your pencils. In a voluntary order, please stand and give your one minute closing statement. I enjoyed the conversation and the ideas that I was able to hear from each one of you. I've come to the consensus that the best way to resolve the issue at hand is to create better relationships with the farmers and the community through the Farm Bureau, as well as utilizing the FFA activities that the youth have in place already, and uh, implementing stronger activities about through the Farm Bureau about uh, this uh, the importance of agricultural land and the value of agricultural land. Thank you. I appreciate all your points. I thought there were some very great points brought up. I think 
overall, the solution is educating young and old alike, um, but helping them see why we need to keep farmland as farmland. I think that can be done by using existing organizations through the Farm Bureau to educate the young people through existing programs like um, that the FFA already does and things like that, and also to get the younger guys experience in, in the fields with these older operations so that we can ensure that farmland stays as farmland. And in the end, those connections are valuable and it's not always what you know, it's who you know. So, I'll end with that. I believe that education is key in order to protecting our farmlands. I think it's vital that we use our resources in order to, com to communicate to our public and our younger and older generations that farmlands are a huge impact to our world today and the daily lives. Thank you. I have loved and I'm so excited to hear all of your guys' ideas because there's it's just such a bright future for you know our farmland and our I think our biggest uh, avenue to be able to uh, connect this understanding is that edu through education and through a mentoring program to teach these young youth and farmers to work with old farmers and learn how to uh, preserve our land and know the importance of it. And I also think it's we need to create a sort of uh, convention or something that we can educate, use that social media and all these outlets that we already have existing to get that education out there and let people know how important our farmland is to us. Thank you. I'd like to thank everyone for coming today. I think we had a really productive discussion on this problem and I think that we all came to the general consi consensus that education is really important and we, can, we talked about ways that we can educate people hand on or through an internship program and through other programs that Farm Bureau already has in place such as the FFA and the YFNR. And I think that Farm Bureau can really provide this platform for this community and to help us keep this farmland that's so important to us and to America's economy. Thank you. Let's show these competitors our appreciation for a job well done.